I think it is time to combine a bear with the Aurora Borealis. So that is what I did. And here is the final design I came up with. I'm fortunate to have two different logs to choose from this time. One I got from my neighbor, and the other one I bought on the World Wide Web. These are two sculptures I made a while back. I wanted to show them to give you an idea of how the wooden side of each log looks like as a finished creation. The black walnut has the most play of color. That made it a natural choice, since I'm going to try to portray the northern lights. I've not decided yet what to do for my next project, but I'm pretty sure I will be using the silver birch log for that one. I have to try to design something very graceful for it to complement its silky smooth look. The bear will be placed at the cross section where the branch meets the log. This is the area where the colors of the wood has the greatest contrast. A few minutes into the carving and I already messed up. I cut straight through where the bear and the northern lights would connect. Just as I was hoping for, the area designated for the bear had some incredible colors. This was very motivating to see. I cut the right angle the sculpture would be at early on so that it represented how it would eventually end up. Any cut I can do in the beginning that makes it easier to visualize the next move is very important. And here I am already moving away from the original design. This is simply put because the way the northern lights bent in the design was physically impossible to carve. This is a problem I often run into with my designs. I do not see it as a big problem, since I have gotten used to and kind of enjoy being able to discover the path the sculpture will take as I move further and further into the process. I plan to connect the northern lights at one spot to strengthen it and prevent it from accidentally breaking. I do this with the hopes that my sculptures will be lasting for a very long time. The steel on my draw horse was too close to the sculpture base to continue. If I did, I would be at risk of damaging my tools, which are too expensive for me to replace just like that. So I started figuring out a way to lift the sculpture up a bit.
The sculpture is really starting to take shape now, and before I continue with the northern lights, I think it is time to try to reveal the bear within the sculpture. And if you want to support me through this journey, a great way to do so is to subscribe. Thank you so much. I just want to mention that having these shapes embracing the bear made it a lot more difficult to carve it, but I simply had to do it because I believed it would make the end result so much more pleasing to look at. Having elements like this surrounding the main feature of the project is something I can see myself do again in the future. To me, it is always good to take an opportunity to test new ideas out when I'm able to. So the head is probably the most important thing of the entire sculpture and I'm having a little bit of trouble, you know, knowing where everything goes in relationship to each other. So the solution is to do a little bit more work on the body so that I know how they both, you know, connect. This is the moment I can safely say that the bear has emerged from the wood. I would say that I'm beyond complete failure right now, with the exception of the head that still needs work. I am nervous as always about carving the facial features, but I have gotten more used to trusting my skills. I freehanded this wavy pattern and I wanted it to have some sharp twists and turns, with the hope of capturing some life in them. Okay, so it's time to work on the Aurora itself. It's uh, what I've been looking the most forward to because I really think that is gonna like it's gonna be the first thing you see when you see the sculpture. The light shining through this area made me really curious about how the end result would look. When I had to decide how to carve the waves of the aurora, I wanted to focus on not making them too close to each other. If I did, I think it would have disturbed the calm look I was going for. Initially, my plan was to have smooth spikes at the top of the waves, but I felt like the northern lights in the sculpture was a little bit too short for that. I could see myself make another sculpture similar to this in the future, where it stretches a little bit longer. I think my plan of making the aurora look solid worked out, especially by making the rim of it thick.
So time for the final detail on the bear, which is the paws. But before I make them, I have to make sure the bottom of the bear is completely flat. Okay, so all the carving is pretty much done now. Uh, one thing I was a little bit afraid of was if this thing was gonna look like it was a rainbow coming from the bear's butt. But I think since I connected it from the bottom of the leg, it looks uh, more like uh, something uh, embracing it instead. <laughs> but yeah, now it's time for the hand sanding. I want to dedicate this sculpture to Emma. She was a dog who recently passed away that I had a special bond with. Thank you so much Emma for uh, happy memories I still have with you and uh, may you rest in peace. For this sculpture I have been able to have a more relaxed approach and it has given me more energy to do what I really love. And thank you so much to my patrons for backing me through this fun journey. I have now seen my three larger sculptures side by side, and I have to say I'm pretty hyped about the future exhibition. With that being said, Aurora is now ready to show herself to the world, and here she is.